Hi for day. My name is Alyssa Taitano. I have a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of Guam, and I'm the local collaborator of this research team. I'll be breaking up this presentation into three parts. First, the Harvard lab visit, then my perspective of the study as a scientist, then my personal perspective as a Chamorro woman. My purpose as the local collaborator is to help educate the community of the study findings as an indigenous scientist. I, along with Dr. Hunter Anderson, Ms. Aiken, and my father traveled to Boston to visit Dr. David Reich's lab at Harvard Medical School. This is where the analytical procedures were conducted for the ancient DNA. In this photo, we are discussing the research findings at the Museum of Comparative Zoology building. After meeting the experts, Dr. Yue Chen Liu and Dr. David Reich, I got the impression that the ancient Chamorro DNA was in good hands. Based on how knowledgeable they were on DNA analysis and how passionate they were about the study. On the far left is Dr. Yue Chen Liu, a postdoc under Dr. Reich and the first author of this study. To the right of Ms. Aiken is Dr. Jacob Sedig, a postdoc under Dr. Reich as well. He has helped prepare the grant application to the National Geographic Society and arranged our lab visit at Harvard. To the right of him is Dr. David Reich, a geneticist and principal investigator of the David Reich Lab of Harvard University. Dr. Miguel Villar on the far right is a geneticist who studies modern Chamorro DNA and is a co-author of this study. Although my dad came as a proud father, they invited him to sit at the table with us and allowed him to share his thoughts on how their research was perceived by an indigenous Chamorro. It was a surreal moment for my dad and I, interacting with the professionals, such as Dr. Liu and Dr. Reich. There's been much debate on where Chamorros originated from and their movements. Much of the evidence is mainly from linguistic markers and archeological findings, such as Mariana's redware, but not much from a genetic standpoint. Scholars have theorized that Chamorros came from the Philippines. Based on the Chamorro language being grouped in the Austronesian language family, where Tagalog, for example, is grouped as well. An example of these similarities are shown in the word coconut, where in Chamorro, coconut is nizuk, and in Tagalog, coconut is nyug. The theory that Chamorros are from the Philippines, specifically the Northern Philippines, would be correct if all Austronesian languages were derived from Taiwan, being the parent language, and Chamorro being the daughter language. However, this theory was rejected due to archeological findings showing that early settlers were marine foragers rather than agriculturalists from the Northern Philippines. Another example is pottery. Although there is no evidence that confirms the link between pottery from the Philippines and pottery from the Marianas, it is often an example of how Chamorros are potentially from the Philippines. This is due to their similar designs and the time of their production, which is around 3,500 years ago. However, recent microscopic examination of the Marianas redware and pottery from the Philippines showed that the production processes were completely different. So that poses the question, where are we from? Where did Chamorros come from? Along with recent archeological evidence, genetic evidence is also straying away from the theory that Chamorros are from the Philippines. We found that ancient Chamorros are likely from island Southeast Asia, having no New Guinea or Philippine ancestry. This study also included central Micronesian Islanders, such as Pompeians and Chukis for comparison. It was concluded that they have Northern New Guinea ancestry. Because of genetics, we can confirm that ancient Chamorros had a matrilocal society. After a Chamorro man and woman were married, the woman stayed in their family home while their newly wed husband would be welcome into the woman's home. We know this because of the strong homogeneity of haplogroup E2A. In contrast, Palau and Central Micronesia show evidence of a patrilocal society. 
Personally, I have struggled with the Chamorro identity for as long as I could remember. Growing up, I was confused as to what is truly Chamorro and what we as a people have acculturated. One example is counting. In Chamorro class, I was taught uno, dos, tres, cuatro for the numbers one, two, three, and four. But later I found out that was Spanish and real Chamorro counting was Hatsa Huga Tulu Fatfat. Due to the lack of documentation, we Chamorros relied solely on oral tradition to learn our customs and history. This particular study excites me because of what we could learn and now confirm from genetics about our cultural practices as Chamorros and Micronesians. DNA studies of ancient Chamorros simply add another clue to the mystery of our origins. Most written documents about our past are from a westernized perspective, which usually favors the author's agenda and beliefs. With DNA, there is no historiography. DNA provides evidence that eliminates bias. Genetic studies specifically provide ancient Chamorros a voice and tells the story of our movements and practices as a people. I, along with my dad, whom I shared this experience with, are very thankful that there is research like this that sheds light on our origins. These genetic discoveries are helping to correct long-standing myths of our origins. Thank you and Donkalu Nasizu Asmaasi.